What's up YouTube, it's Bus Saiyan here coming at you with another unboxing video and we are back at the realms of board games today. And of course by now those of you who follow my videos know that I'm a massive science fiction fan if you haven't spotted some of the books and the DVDs and the games behind me as well. And today I am bringing you a really cool and actually very very cheap science fiction board game which is inside this sizable box here and I had a peek through just when it arrived the other day to see if actually I will be reviewing what I am reviewing and luckily yes it is so let's crack open this box here and uh, let's get into the board game itself of course I'm using my trusty pair of scissors my good member of the team and there you have it ladies and gents I'm bringing you Star Saga how to do this properly so you see without the glare that is it Star Saga really cool sci-fi adventure board game for one to five players this as many other things nowadays has started out as a Kickstarter project and it has a predecessor that is called Dungeon Saga, which of course, as you would guess, is based on the good old fantasy fiction that Dungeons and Dragons have provided us with for many, many years in the past, which of course I have enjoyed myself when I was a teenager. I used to be playing the 3.0 a lot. Loved it. Complete immersion. How did I hear of Star Saga? Well, one of my good buddies has introduced me to this game and he said like, hey man, like I found this really uh, cheap, really cool game online, ordered it, then we found some time, got a few games in and it is amazing. I really, really highly recommend it, just even without getting into the components. It's really cool. Um, honestly, I think the, uh, the art design they use is really sweet as well and just it's generally like look at all the components you get that, uh, this was that 25 pounds guys that is a brand new box of this game 25 quid plus you gotta pay for it, of course the postage so let's crack this bad boy up and see what's inside there not that i don't know but you may not know hence why we're gonna crack open this bad boy all right so we are expecting obviously rule books we're expecting models we're expecting terrain. I need to get into this box somehow. Okay. All right. Plastic, of course. Keeping the box wrapped. Make sure that it's not missing any components. Don't know why they couldn't just put it in a lot. Another cardboard box maybe would have been a bit more expensive then. But I would have appreciated that. Sure. Okay, so opening it up first time. So you guys can see there you go. Star Saga. Oh, you know it's a board game. It's a good board game when it farts when you open the top. That is a good sign. Okay, so we got loads of stuff here already, as you can see. Um, everything is in plastic. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, okay, so what do we have here? Let's just um, unpack everything. Woohoo! Loads of shit. Loads and loads of stuff. Okay, so this was the first layer. Then if we go below, there are some more terrains. There is a counter here, somehow fell out. That's also kind of managed to hurt this booklet a little bit, so that's not that great. All uh, right, so we have a punch-out board here. That's where that shit was coming from. Okay. So perhaps when they packed it, they could have been a little bit more... Careful, look at that. That carton is now a bit fudged up. But, um, well, oh, 
and it, it's now out anyway so there you go this is all the terrain basically all the little bits and bobs life counters and we're, we're gonna come back to this in a minute okay so rule book we have two books we have the uh, rule book which as you would have guessed has the rules in it a little reference guide here at the back uh, which tells you also all sorts of things obviously the rule book will detail all the rules for uh, whether well, you play on your own then you have to use an artificial enemy artificial nexus so what do you need to do how do you need to use the cards when that is the case uh, rule book really cool what I particularly like about it is that it is the size of a comic book which makes it a hell of a lot more easy to just flick back and forth through this little book. It is a bit flimsy, it's pretty much comic book quality, but obviously one of the reasons why the game is so cheap is because they went for some cheap solutions in, in some of the cases, but I think this is great. If any of you who have played Nemesis before, the rule book is probably twice the size of this, probably would be the size of to these two books together and it's really flimsy if you're just trying to find one little thing this you can hold in one hand flick through it easily that little monstrosity has to be put on the table it's very difficult to just flick, flick through it in a hand like I am doing with this here the second book that is slightly creased hallelujah uh, it's not too bad actually it's um, it's alright um, the Arias Contract, these are the mission books, so when you play through the game, there are eight missions in here to follow. There's a little bit of um, introduction and backstory as well as to what the hell is going on, uh, who are your crew members, and who are some of the main characters that uh, you will be battling against in this board game. And what's really cool about Star Saga, and one of the reasons why I picked it up myself, is that once you finish those eight chapters, eight missions, and there are three introductory missions, uh, so technically you could say there are 11 missions in the game, but the first three are just to ease you into the gameplay and get to know the characters uh, more. Um, it is a really cool game for you to develop your own missions, potentially your own characters, and just come up with your own storyline. It's something that um, I always missed from when I used to play Dungeons and Dragons back in the days about, oh gosh, nearly 20 years ago now. I'll say let's, let's go with 15 years. That's probably going to work there. Was the fact that we just couldn't afford to get models and we couldn't really afford to get terrain there wasn't much out there specific for Dungeons and Dragons anyway from where we used to play um, not to say that there wasn't anything out there because I know there was stuff out there but we just couldn't really afford it we were happy to have the the books and uh, we would just hand draw thring, things you know the maps terrains when we had battles and things like that which was cool for the time but I've always been a massive fan of, of having uh, you know, all sorts of models and, and special dice to throw around and have your uh, characters develop. And in this game, you can level up. Uh, one of the reasons why we have that little slider on the side is that your characters can level up. So you can carry on you know, running the campaign after even the eight missions. You can have your guys constantly level up. They can also uh, pick up new traits, what their character's basic design doesn't have eventually as you go through over time. So what do we have here then? We started with the character sheets. So let's focus on that first, I suppose. After the rule books, of course. So we have six main characters we have our uh, captain captain of the team now these these are all mercenary guys put together by a guy called Blaine no not the gym leader Blaine from Pokemon uh, this is another Blaine so we have Erika Dulinski uh, she's very proficient with long-range weapons and she's alright uh, we have Wrath who is the best in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, they all have their... This is their point value from when you're building a team, uh, similar to Warhammer. These are their all, all their stats, speed, shoot, uh, combat value for melee, 
uh, defense value and hacking capabilities. This is their life basically. Uh, when they're leveling up, this is where they're collecting experience points. They have explanation there for their pistols, maybe some additional uh, abilities they may have, and they have a special feature there at the bottom which they can use once a game. Normally in the game you can move and then shoot. If you don't move you can only shoot, you can't shoot and then move. If you're using your special feature that takes up your whole turn so you can't move, you just do whatever the special feature does. Some special features tell you you can move but in general you can't. A couple of enemy, these are, these are bosses so we got aberration here, we have a, an enforcer uh, uh, codename Monarch. Then we have another team member here. I don't know why they're mixed up here. Uh, we have the Devil, uh, Fran Francesco Salva Salvaggio, Salvaggio. I don't know. If you can put it down in the comment how to pronounce this because I am not proficient with uh, Latin languages. Latin? Latina. I don't know. Portuguese, Spanish. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not trying to be ignorant. I just don't know the language. So. Um, same, uh, this is our third team member, then we have Kirby, the um, robot of the team, really good in hacking consoles, not very good in some other things. Uh, another boss here, Dr. Lucas Coiner, also known as Dr. Octopus. Uh, we have an organic data storage unit, which I have no idea what the hell is, what it does. If it's a storage unit, I don't know why it would attack you, but uh, hey-ho. Worst things happen, I see. One of my favorite characters, Ogun Hellcare. Uh, he's the space dwarf of the game. He's very good with some of the things he does. He's very good in defense as well. You can see on the point at the top as well, he's, he's worth more than some of the other guys in the team. And then we have Alice. She's basically a Jedi. She can heal other people, uh, heal herself. She has this life drain ability. So as I said, she's like a Jedi. And then we have... Guard Commander Graves here, our final boss. So we got five bosses here, and we have six crew members. That is the basic. Um, that's the basic base set box that we have. Obviously, there are there is already, I believe, one expansion out. You can also get better terrain models, things made out of acrylic uh, stuff, um, particularly for your long range, short range, uh, measurement ruler for when you fire weapons and all sorts of things like that. So these are the character cards and you can tell the difference by looking at their back. The red ones are bosses, the blue ones are team members and they're really cool. Um, absolute blast. Okay, next cards. So we have uh, skills here. Uh, these are not just skills, but I think extra weapons are in this deck of cards as well that you can um, pick up. Uh, you can loot boxes throughout the game if you find boxes or shelves or anything like that. You can loot them. Um, it's a very high percentage chance that you actually find something on the shelves themselves. So we got, it's, it's all a mess. Okay, so we got skills, we got uh, mission bonuses, we got rare items, um, uh, and loot, as I said. So we're not going to go through it all because obviously it's a mess. But for loot, we can have pretty much all sorts of stuff. Uh, that could be weapons, it could be maps, it could be healing items, you know, all the goody goodies. Skills are stuff that you can level your characters up with. Um, there are some special traits down there, what they uh, may relate to, like assault or speed or, um, or general stuff. Uh, which is all great. You use these to level up your characters. Leveling up is not something I'm going to get into. Uh, maybe I do another video on that later on. But for now, that's that's all what we're going to cover here. Rare items. Um, rare items, as you expect, they are items that are rare to be found. Not quite sure how to get them yet. We didn't get that far in the game, but I'm going to figure out. Obviously, mission bonuses is the last one, and indeed, some levels. When you um, search certain cabinets, you may find mission bonuses that can be used later on in the game. So that's pretty cool. 
Okay, so that those are the smaller size cards, and we have these uh, regular size cards. I suppose they're pretty much the same size as as uh, Magic cards. Exactly, one hundred percent the same size as Magic cards. So get into that with that precision that we have to have to get into these bloody plastic sheets. Okay, all right. So these are the Nexus cards. And as I said again, are they only Nexus cards? Uh, no, we've got Nexus cards. We have this Mantic points, which is advertisement, and we have minion cards here as well. We have deployable equipment and psychic powers. Mostly Nexus, though. Uh, the minions will obviously be the well, the minions, the smaller enemies that you battle. Security guards, plague victim. Um, lab tech, all, all, all the baddies that are hired, grunts, psychic powers, well, I think that is that data unit, that access unit that can use some of these things, I'm assuming that because I can see it in the background, so can I don't really, I didn't really get that far in the game to know exactly what these things are, but I like the purple color, so I like the cards. Deployable equipment, this is all for uh, Ogak, Ogan. You can deploy force fields and sentry guns, which are really good shit. And these are the cards, you have to basically treat them as um, um, what they are. And um, then, of course, we have the Nexus cards. There are different levels, I think. Levels um, 1. Which you can see down there, all the way up to level three, and we have a uh, and we have a van cards, and basically, if a player is playing the Nexus, these are the cards they will play. They're looking at the top thing at the top, and that's what they can do. Like this one allows them to look at the top five cards of the Nexus deck, rearrange it in any order. If you're playing alone, if you're a sad guy like a lot of us, then you would be using the blue uh, background um, part of the card which goes for the uh, auto nexus so if you play against uh, yourself basically you would be activating whatever is there at the bottom and you have to build the deck according to the rules and obviously the, it will make sense then we also have events when the events happen you read the card which explains the card you have to build the deck for the nexus before every game and you may have to include a certain amount of these event cards when they happen they happen and then that's it it's been done so um, obviously they thought of a lot of things I'm not saying it's a uh, I'm not saying it's a fully polished game but they as far as I understand not having played with dungeon saga they have learned from their mistakes they have definitely uh, made certain things easier in the game. I do you believe that their equivalent of the Nexus deck in that game when it ran out, that would that's it? That that would be I don't know if it was game over or just Nexus or the enemy wouldn't be able to do anything else. It's not the case anymore. If you run out of the Nexus deck, you just reshuffle your discard pile and start over again. And also another thing that is new to this game are the special dice. So let's have a look at that. See what special dice we have. As you have probably noticed, we have two colors. We have red and blue, and for those of you who have played uh, strategy games like this before, you may have already guessed that red will be attack, blue will be defend. And how it works is um, every die has um, three different uh, symbols on them. So if you compare, if you take the um, if you take the action dice, the shooting dice, then this is a blank. This is uh, the lowest level of shots. This is the mid-level shot, and this will be the highest level of shots. And you defend, depending what you roll, you may not defend at all if you roll a blank. If you roll a hollow shield, then you can blank out anything that has the hollow um, sort of explosion sign on it. If you get a uh, fully uh, filled shield that blocks the hollow one and the filled explosion, and if you roll a um, exclamation mark defense, DEFENSE! then that will block the exclamation mark attack and the uh, medium attack and also the low level attack. And of course, if 
you get a blank, you're not shooting or you're not attacking. If you roll a blank on this one, you're not defending at all. And it is that simple. It is that simple. And that's one of the things about this game is you can pick it up and pretty much pick up the rules as you play through your first mission, which is amazing. It's, um, you know, if you ever played Dungeons and Dragons, you know how long it takes just to prepare your character and obviously... Uh, the level of investment is very similar in that game compared to this one, but you everything uh, you have everything prepared here, and you still get that element of leveling up your character and getting invested in your character, and and, and you know maybe you have uh, played through some of the missions and you think like oh this is really good I think I'm gonna have a crack at maybe building my own map maybe coming up with coming up with my own story. You can get, as I said, expansions, you can get terrain expansions, you can get extra models if you feel like you don't have enough of the base models that you got in this game. If you want to have bigger adventures, you can get all that stuff cheap, but you can just stick with the core set and just have a blast playing with that. And obviously you can be inventive, you can use boards from other games as well if that's the route you want to go down in. So it's it's really, really uh, giving you a platform to um, to sort of, um, uh, you know, just, just get into science fiction, um, a, sci a science fiction role-playing game where you may have the character already set up for you, but that doesn't mean you can't come up with, with any other things. And, um, you know, the thing is with Nemesis that you can do that there as well. But it is a lot more strict in what you can and you can't do. Obviously, balancing the models uh, is a little... Well, the characters, what they do is a little bit more difficult. They have specific cards and all that. None of that stuff here. All you really need to do is use your character sheet and use these two decks. And, and whatever you can come up with, you can do it in this game. And that is that's amazing. I think that just gives a really good uh, incentive for people to get this. 20, 25 pounds, you can even get it sometimes, so 20 pounds if you keep your eyes out on Amazon. And look at all this stuff we got for that, that amount of money. That is amazing. Um, these little clips, they're for your experience. So you would slide it on the slide of the card, kind of like in the score Dragon Ball uh, trading card game back in the days where you would score a power level on your character on the side. So this that's for that. And then we have, let's look at the terrain models. Uh, so we got, um, we got doors in here. We got uh, a, few, a few different sized um, doors. Obviously this is all uh, ready to be painted. So we got one, two, three, four of the larger doors, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six of the smaller doors. But not to say you can't attach two doors and make it a sliding door like that. Maybe not the best, but I don't know. You can again be inventive. Probably enough doors to get you through the missions and just generally have enough to fuck about with. And this box, this back here even, is um, full of additional terrain models. So we have all the, these are the loot boxes I was talking about. You could use them for loot, you could also use them to surprise uh, the player if you're playing the uh, Nexus side. There's a gun rack here, another one. So there's numerous gun racks, there's a little uh, drawer unit here, and another one. Uh, terminals for opening doors and generally interacting with the um, with the game uh, a bench like a canteen bench another one that's a bit wonky so uh, yeah you can definitely feel a little bit the the, the low budget side of, of it here with the models but it's not the end of the world uh, you can just kick them out like that they're they're very soft uh, so they're malleable so that's not really the end of the world Another unit, shelving unit, some more loot boxes there, a different type of terminal, looks really cool. We got some tanks here for whatever you would put into tanks in space. Uh, more crates, we got a couple of desks here, again a bit of a wonky, <laughs> wonky feed there, but hey, look at that. That's pretty much fixed now, although it is bending back real time. Um, 
Yep, you know, small, minor things like that. But again, for the money you get, uh, it's worth it. Look at that wonky table. Now, that's a bad one. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can if we can bend this back a little bit. Uh, yeah, probably. It will do for now. So that's all the stuff you got here. Very soft plastic, as I said, so don't be afraid to bend around. This is this is solid. The doors are solid. These are all a bit more. I love these tanks. They have some weight to it, so this isn't hollow. This is proper filled with um, bio sludge. Um, okay, what else do we have here? We got our red guys. These are all the enemy characters. Uh, some of them have weapons, some of them have uh, deadly knives and um, tubes and all that stuff. We've got the blue models which are these are these seem to me like these are some of the bosses. Some more red grunts. Uh, these are our Heroes, some more red grunts, more red grunts, and we have the Abomination. Let's look at the Abomination, that's a cool one. This is a big ass model as well compared to the other guys. Check this beast out, check this guy out. This guy is the Abomination, I don't know how they call it exactly, surely no copyright infringements there. It's got a bit of everything, guys. It's got a bit of Star Wars. It's got a bit of Resident Evil. It's got a bit of <laughs> Marvel stuff in there. Let's look at some of these these grunts as well. So that's a guy with a uh, machine gun. We have an infected guy. Looks a little bit like Hulk. I'm not going to lie. Looks a little bit like Hulk. Uh, another guy with a machine gun. These are some slightly higher level soldiers, actually, than the ones I've played against. Another one with a machine gun. Looks like uh, combat armor for um, uh, <laughs> for that one. Uh, okay, let's look at the uh, lab technicians. Okay, was the feed there? Lab technicians. So they got like a baton, kind of stick type of thing that they will attack you with. It's a melee attack. Uh, some of the guys with the machine guns, some more guys with the machine guns. This guy is on his walkie talkie or mobile phone or whatever it is that is communicating with. That's why he gets shot a lot of times because he's not paying attention. Uh, another guy with a machine gun. And another lab technician. This one, this time with a uh, dangerous tube, smashing a glass tube on your head. It's probably a knife, actually. I'm not gonna lie. Looks like a knife. And let's look at some of the bosses then. I go. All right. Somebody got stuck. Oh geez. Right, go through it. So this is Dr. Octopus. <laughs> it's not Dr. Octopus, but it looks like Dr. Octopus. Uh, this is that really fucking weird thing. I don't really know what this is supposed to do, but we'll find out in the game. This is the commander. That looks like a. Um, don't even know. Another guy in power armor. And we have this stuff, which is a bomb in a suitcase. Of course, plastic. So don't worry about it. And then we have more characters, more red guys there. Because you can never have enough enemies on a board. So look at all those red guys, look at them, they're all about to kill you, there's a lot of them. And then we got these guys, these guys are our heroes. And we got the sentry guns in here, we get the um, 
extremely tiny pieces for the um, for the shield generator. Do not lose this shit. Put it in somewhere where you know it won't get lost because it's very easy to lose it. We get two sentry guns. Again, that's what the Space Dwarf can plant, those four things. This is the Space Dwarf himself. Then we have the uh, the crazy flamethrower guy, the devil. We have the um, we have Wrath. Comes from a peaceful species, but he turned he was brought up to be a berserk hand-to-hand -to -hand sword combat guy. This is Captain Dulinsky, the leader of the Mercs. And this is our Jedi um, with, I don't know, some sort of a stick in her hand. And we have the, uh, the droid whose arm is bent. So that shouldn't be like that. That should be outwards. I'm worried that I'm going to break it now. Uh, not great. I think we shall just leave it like this for now. This is Kirby to hack the terminals and do all sorts of shenanigans like that. So these models, I wish they were a little bit malleable because if this guy breaks, my heart will break too. Okay, so these are basically all the stuff we get in the box and the pop-outs. So just to show you guys real quick what's on here. These will be summoning points for the Nexus player, the difficulty of the doors, no clue what this is, all sorts of terrain as you can see. Uh, this is for the, the turn order for the mercenaries, flip it around, you can see that. Um, more terrain and health, if you take a health off you put this on top of that green stuff. Can eventually go into being crippled where you lose dice rolls more life scattered around this is the template of the flamethrower more um, um, rooms and corridors and stuff and some more rooms on this one and a little bit more corridors so you can pop these out you can turn them they got two sides so obviously you can um, definitely spice up what your uh, missions will look like and and all that type of shenanigans that you should do when you play Star Saga, a really cool science fiction role playing board game that is out from Mantic. I think Mantic, yeah, Mantic. Um, and very cheap. I do kind of feel sorry for the guys who backed the game because I think it was probably more expensive than this, but. Um, Hey ho, it's still a really good platform to just get a few games in. You can follow the main book for the missions. You can come up with your own stuff. You can buy expansions. You can get extra stuff for this game. It's really cool. You can be a Jedi. You can fight against Dr. Octopus with a Jedi. What more can you wish for? Thanks for tuning in. And make sure you support all the great games out there. And until next time, peace out YouTube, Busse and signing out, peace.